if you are looking to develop a stronger course so that you can move throughout your life easier, you've come to the right place. Today, I'm going to teach you about a foundational movement called a hollow body. I'm gonna show you how to perform a hollow body and teach you the regressions, so how to make it easier, and the progressions, how to make it harder, so that you can continuously work on strengthening your core. Once I've taught you how to do it, we are actually going to do it. So we're gonna do a six minute hollow body workout together at the end of this. But the thing is, I need you to know how to do it properly. So I need you to listen just for a little bit so that you can truly progress and hit your goals. So having a strong core is literally important for everyone. It provides the foundation, the stabilization for all of our movements. So if you have a strong core, everything is going to be easier. Whether you're a pole dancer, a rock climber, a power lifter, if you're just a human, having a strong core is very important. And it's definitely important for calisthenics. First things first, a hollow body is a dish position and it can be performed in multiple different planes of movement. We today are gonna to use the hollow body on our backs and on our hands. For example, when you perform a push-up, you wanna perform it in that dish shape, not an arch shape. So when performing a hollow body, you are posteriorly tilting your pelvis. You're creating a compression and a full body tension. So it does require some coordination and obviously a lot of strength to hold that. And that's why we're going to train that today. Have you ever tried to do a handstand and had your lower back cave fall backwards? You lose control. Well, training this hollow body is going to teach your body how to pull it back into our little dish shape so that we can control that handstand. We're actually going to train that so we have strength so we're not going to collapse our lower back. Okay, now that I've said all that, I want to teach you how to regress or progress the movement so that you actually know how to do this without referencing the video because ideally you'll do this workout a couple times and then be able to perform it anywhere you are as long as you have a timer with you. Anytime we are on our back, we need to maintain contact with our lower back. That is the most important part. So we need to do that tilt and have our back connected the whole time. If you're extending your legs and then you start to arch, you are not training it effectively. You need to stop, reset, and choose an easier progression so that you're actually training what we want to train, which is that dish shape. So how do you regress? Let me show you. First of all, the easiest way to regress is by moving your legs closer to your body. So I'll demonstrate it here. So knees stacked over hips, that's gonna be the easiest one. And then from there, you just extend your legs. You can do a straddle. You can go into the full position or you can do single leg. So what I like to do when performing a hollow body hold is I actually move through the different progressions. So I tend to start with the hardest one. So for me, it would be the full progression. I'd start with that one. And then throughout my 40 second hold, I'll actually regress throughout the hold. So the next way to regress the full hollow body position is to change your hand placement. The easiest would be to have them on the ground supporting you. And then to make it harder, you lift your arms continuously overhead. Now the full hollow body where your arms are overhead and your legs are extended is quite hard and it will take time to get there. So don't rush it. Maintain that contact with your lower back on the ground. If you're having trouble connecting with your entire body because this is a full body movement, then what you can do is you can put something between your knees to help remind your body to squeeze and hold that in place. When you first train hollow bodies, it is a lot, a lot of coordination, a lot of things firing. So you make it easier on yourself by just putting a rolled up towel or a yoga block, something in between your knees. Other points is that you want your shoulder blades off of the ground but you're thinking about compressing. So you're not as much thinking about lifting up really high, more so parallel with the ground. So you can actually put a yoga block in front of you and try and reach that just to help you get that compression. So you wanna breathe out, squeeze your core, and then lift up. Okay, so now you should have it. What you wanna do is you wanna pick an exercise at the start that challenges you. Throughout your hold, you are welcome to move your legs around to make it easier or harder for you. Or you can even do little pulses, whether it's with your hands, with your feet, or with both, just to keep you in that position for longer and actually training it instead of completely collapsing it and giving up. So today for the workout, we are just going to do a tiny little core activation, little warm up. just follow along on the screen. And then from there, we're gonna hold each position for 40 seconds, no rest. 
For you, you might not be able to hold all 40 seconds, so that's okay, come down, reset, connect with your core, make sure you're not doing that weird bread loaf with your stomach, you want it nice, flat, and compressed, and get yourself back up. And then over time, your goal would be to hit the 40 seconds, or reference the little videos that I post there, or what I just taught you, to regress, so that you are actually able to hold the 40 seconds, just in a regress position, and then over time, you can progress as you go. Okay, roll out your mat. We're about to get started. We're going to go through some general warm-up and core activation before we get into the actual workout, which is going to be 40 seconds on for 6 minutes. I'll meet you on the mat. Let's go. Okay, starting off with some twists here to get everything loose and moving. I spend my days sitting at a desk, so this is really important for me. Okay, come on to all fours, onto your knees. We're gonna do some spinal segmentation, and that is where we're moving each vertebrae individually, or trying to. But flow through a couple of these, really focusing on getting to the end range of your spine, really contracting and breathing deeply. Flow through your last segmentation here, followed by some side-to-side -side twists. Coming back up to the top position of your cat and cow, we are going to hold it here for 10 seconds, really squeezing, contracting those abs, squeezing those wrists to those knees, really contracting. And now hover the knees, just slightly, just hover them, you can do it. Let's go, core should be on fire already. And drop those knees. Segment back down. Coming into your cat position, we're going to work on just moving our lower spine, keeping the upper spine still. And now the upper spine. Really anchor that lower spine in place and try to just segment the top portion. Then make your way to one last cat hold. We're going to hold and then lift the knees. They're really contracting, trying to squeeze those abs. Also, a quick note here, if you have really tight hamstrings or tight hip flexors, you might want to do a little bit of stretching before you go into the hollow body workout. Onto your backs for our first hollow body hold, 40 seconds. Don't forget to move down progression if it's getting too hard for you. Turn around onto your stomach and we're going to do an arch body hold. Stay on your stomachs as we're going to move to an elbow plank hollow body hold.
Next, onto our sides. Don't forget to choose a harder progression at the start and move to an easier one as we go throughout the hold. Same thing, other side. Onto our back for a hollow body rock. Don't be afraid to put your palms on the ground and use it to assist you or to just do a stationary hold. onto arch body rocks. Next on to tucks, if you can't do the full range of motion, just do little tiny pulses. Next up, we're going to go into a hollow body plank on our hands and then bring one knee forward. Nice big squeeze as you bring that knee up and clench your abs.
Okay, guys, you did it. You lasted. You made it. And you know what? If you didn't hit all 40 seconds, that is okay. Now you just have a goal of something to work towards. Thank you very much for joining me today for this workout. I hope that you found it useful, and I hope you start to incorporate hollow bodies into your regular training because they really are such a good foundational movement. Please like, leave a comment so that I can go ahead and make more videos for you. I hope you appreciated this. Have a great afternoon, guys.